So this idea, I, I, I'm really excited about. Now I know all you short sellers out there are gonna say, well, everybody's gonna do that. Well, well, they aren't doing it. And I don't know of anybody else that is doing this right now. So I'm gonna tell you what I see versus what everybody else says. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Following Tesla's battery invest today, engineering nerds the world over are having a field day myself included, and of course, Sandy Munro has had plenty to say as well. Munro Live, link in description to the full video, have finally released their official Battery Invest Today follow-up video, sharing Sandy Munro's thoughts about the battery technology, the new manufacturing processes, and plenty more. So, if you're an engineering nerd, Tesla stock investor, or just have nothing better to do, enjoy the video. Let's dive in. But first, hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get a free stock, check out the link in the description to Webull. If you open a new account and fund it with $100, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. Uh, let's start off with what we've got right now. This is the 2170, which means it's 21 across the diameter and, and 70 millimeters long. With this battery and um, this pack, when it's full, you're looking at uh, 74 kilowatt hours of power that's uh, built into this product. Now, you've all seen battery day, but what you didn't see was this. Here's a little comparison between, here's the 2170, the little dinky one, and this is kind of the same. Now, I made a prediction before battery day quite a bit ago, and I said probably the new form factor is going to be a 5070, okay? But instead it's a 4680. But, but basically what that does is it gives us exactly the same, um, the same volume. So I hit the volume, but I didn't get the, the numbers right as far as the, uh, as far as the uh, uh, length and, uh, and diameter. Just a quick round of applause there to Sandy. I mean, how on earth did he manage to predict, successfully, accurately predict the new cell volume? Engineering brain, a little bit of thinking, what makes sense, go down to the atoms, work your way up from there, think of thermal management, think of what's feasible, etc. Okay, let's make a prediction. The guy gets it. He's got an engineering mindset, as does Tesla. They're likely to draw very similar conclusions about how to improve, find new efficiencies, do more with less, etc. So, What's the difference? Okay, so I already told you that this is, uh, that battery pack is uh, 74 kilowatt hours. The new one with this battery pack, uh, using these kinds of products, that's gonna be 130 kilowatt hours. That's, that's like almost, that's pretty close to being double the amount of power, and that's in the same space. So let's have a look just first off on the manufacturing that we would see if we were looking at the existing 2170. So these little doodads right here, we've talked about this before, but this is, um, these are called micro-channel extrusions. That's what this little holes are over here. This little black stuff that you see at the end, that's the, uh, that's the micro-channel. And what goes through there is the coolant the, to keep the batteries cool. And they're cooled, as you can see, they're cooled on the edges or the sides of the, uh, the battery. And that's what you see here. You see the glue marks and whatnot. You can see that it's kind of like partially wrapping around the uh, battery. But that's not the best way to cool a battery. The best way to cool a battery is axially. Axially means it's going down, up and down the, uh, the center of the, uh, of the, of the uh, battery. The, the battery heats at the top and the bottom, but the sides, you can pull, you can wick, uh, you can wick heat out, but it's better if I can sit it on the bottom of the uh, battery and let the, let the cooling come out through the bottom. I want you to also take note of all of the doodads that are around here. Now, we still have to have the collector plates on this side, but this side's got mm, a lot of things that maybe we aren't going to need in the future. So let's look at some of the other pieces of structure that we've got. Have a look at this right here. Now, some of these parts have been removed, but you can see here that there's an I-beam, basically, that's holding down these, uh, these battery packs to keep them in place. Now. Think about all of that and think about the steel structure around it. And then let's have a quick look at what, um, at what it might look like if we go with the new batteries. This gives us about the same density that we've seen in the, uh, in the other battery packs. 
this, this arrangement, if you like, is kind of like what they're probably going to be coming up with. And the battery is going to be cooled from the bottom. So let's talk about cost reductions. All right, so we already talked about what's happening over here. From now on, we're not going to have any more individual cases. These uh, cases come as, a, as an individual pack. You can see that. The cases are gone. These cooling packs right here, they're going to be gone. If you're an engineering nerd or you understand some of the fundamental principles of manufacturing, you'll understand how mind-blowingly impressive this is. As Elon has said in the past, the best part is no part. The best process, no process. And they have deleted an enormous amount of parts, processes, and complexity, not to mention weight. We still have a chunk of steel that's holding and supporting all of this stuff. It's going to be replaced by a cooling, uh, a cooling plate. And that cooling plate is going to be structural, so the weight will go up a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's doing something versus this thing is just holding up steel, or in this case, holding up batteries. What we want to do is we want to make sure that everything is going to be as rigid as it can possibly be. So these batteries are going to be placed and then if you can see these voids right here, they're going to fill that up with epoxy. And once the epoxy is in here, this is going to be as rigid as any brick that you could ever imagine. This is going to be rock solid. So this idea, I, I, I'm really excited about. If you're an engineering or manufacturing nerd, right now you probably have a massive raging Tesla erection. Did I say that? Nah, you imagine that. Now I know all you short sellers out there are going to say, well, everybody's going to do that. Well, well, they aren't doing it. And I don't know of anybody else that is doing this right now. So I'm going to tell you what I see versus what everybody else says. Sandy Monroe laying the smack down on Tesla short sellers. I'm impressed. Now, let me translate for those of you who may be a little bit unsure where Sandy's coming from here. Ready? I'm Sandy right now. Hey, f face. Are you an engineer? You're not? Then stop talking about Tesla because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about because understanding engineering is fundamental to understanding Tesla's technology and their future. You idiot, stop shorting the stock, you're gonna go bankrupt, thank you. Now, this, uh, this whole arrangement is gonna become what we would call the structural floor pan. So we're gonna have a big casting at one end, a big casting at the other end, and another casting in the middle. And that casting in the middle is usually a stamped pan, and all it does is basically keep you from uh, falling out of the car, but also it keeps the, uh, the rigidness between the front and rear suspension systems. That's what gives you the, 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 the ability not to have the car twist. With this, this thing will never twist. This is gonna have the highest Hertz rating of any vehicle on the planet because of the way this is configured and the fact that all these batteries are now squeezed together and then epoxied in place, this, this thing has nowhere to go. This is going to be phenomenally rigid. Just in case you're unaware or you've forgotten, Tesla currently makes the three safest vehicles ever tested. And now they're going to become even safer. Yes, even safer. So let's look at the, the weight reductions. If we only look at one thing, the, this, uh, this 2170 is encased, this is encased in steel, okay? And that steel case, if we took it and uh, stretched it out along the edge of the, uh, the new um, 4680, you're gonna find out that it's about halfway around. That means that I'm gonna lose 30 to 40% of the weight associated with the battery simply because I've got a bigger diameter. The ease of manufacturing on this is, is like staggering. If you somehow aren't yet aware, Sandy Munro is an expert in automotive manufacturing. I mean, the expert of experts. Let's hear what he said one more time. Please let this sink in. It's important to understand this isn't hyperbole. This man understands more about manufacturing than anyone else on this goddamn planet. What did he say again? The ease of manufacturing on this is, is like staggering, like staggering, like staggering. It'll be, a, this is a cakewalk in comparison to what we've seen in the past with the Tesla battery. The only thing I did not like about the Tesla battery was the fact that it had just, it had so many potential uh, spots for, uh, for a failure. There's, there's, uh, there's, well, eight, 
uh, what would that be, 8,000 connections that have to be made just for the little wire tabs alone. Each one of those wire tabs is, uh, is, is wasting time. With this, we're only looking at 1,800 versus, like I say, 8,800 on the, uh, on the old, old pack. That's one of the things that I was really excited about. Let's have a look at the other major takeaway that I had uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the, the battery day presentation. So um, we all know that I, uh, I made a lot of uh, noise about the, uh, the Tesla uh, wheel inner. It had 107 parts at least, and it had hundreds of more of uh, welds and self-piercing rivets and who knows what else, and laser welding. It had a lot of stuff that I didn't care for. And I said, this should be one piece. And Elon complied. And here it is, one piece. So this is actually what I was talking about. This is the wheel inner, but he added a few things. So he added the stiffener rails that go into the floor pan and hold up the battery. And he also added the, uh, the, the things like, uh, like to support the shock tower and, and also even places where wires could be configured and put into this, uh, into this casting. This was a brilliant idea, but the, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough because he said, oh, I also need something else. I, I, want, um, I want this casting to be bigger, twice as big. So now what you've got is a casting like this on one side, but it really, it, it incorporates the whole rear end of the car. And what did he show us on battery day? He's doing the same thing with the front of a car. Oh, what am I looking at right here, boys and girls? What am I, what am I looking at here? This is a giant casting. This has been sitting on our floor since 2017. Do you know how many thousands of engineers have walked by and looked at this? Do you know how many times we've tried to present this to different companies to say, hey, this is the wave of the future? And do you know how many implemented them? Zero, none. Why? Why didn't they do that? Because it wasn't the same old, same old. Is it any wonder why I continuously shout from the rooftops that the vast majority of legacy automakers are going bankrupt this decade? If you think like a dinosaur, you'll go the way of the dinosaurs. Now, I realize that, um, that some folks out there in the audience might think, ah, oh, well, we'll just go and <clears throat> Tesla didn't do anything extraordinary. They just went on, bought a couple of machines and had some guys make some molds and, uh, and that's that, right? Well, let me tell you something. You don't buy a die casting machine that can do both the front and the rear castings like what they're talking about. You don't, you don't, you don't get that in 15 minutes. This is not Burger King. You don't walk in and say, hey, I want one of those. It doesn't happen that way. I'm telling you right now that this, this is huge. This is huge. The battery and the casting technology that they're going to come up with is going to be basically it's going to eliminate the body shop. It's going to eliminate the job I had when I got out as a kid out of, out of high school and worked my way up in a tool maker to become a tool maker. All that work for stamping parts and whatnot, at least for the uh, floor pan and the uh, front and rear of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the structure is going to be gone in favor of something that I've been pushing for eons. This is the way to go. This is, the, this is gonna be the huge difference that's gonna be needed in order to make things happen. One more time, the best part is no part. The best process is no process. And they've eliminated hundreds of both with these gigantic castings. This is a huge breakthrough in automotive manufacturing. And who's bringing this innovative, disruptive manufacturing technology to market? Tesla, fancy that again. I want to thank Tesla for making my day. Um, they make me a lot happy. I don't drive one of their cars and I don't get paid by them, but they certainly make my, uh, my life easier because every time I've said something in the past regarding what could be the next way or the next wave of, of technology, I get a big blank stare from others and they give me <laughs> this. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's brilliant. Incredibly high praise from Sandy Monroe toward Tesla and remember, just two years ago, Sandy Munro was ripping on their horseshit incompetence at putting together a vehicle in terms of panels, stamping, all that stuff. In two years, they've gone from terrible to industry leading. In two years. And meanwhile, everyone else? They're going to sleep right through their own death. 
I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake using the links below. Deposit $100 in your Webull account, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And Stake, spin the roulette wheel, you'll either get Nike, GoPro, or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server, and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.